And from the mission, Pastor Tim Garino. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Thanks for doing what you do. No, it's, it's great. Um, no, it, it, it's, it's exciting. And isn't it your daughter's birthday or something today? Uh, yesterday, yes. Yesterday. yes. Thank yes, you. Yeah, yesterday. That's awesome when you see that. It is. It's, it's, yeah. I have four daughters, so I know. Oh, what nice. Yeah. <laughs> you then, know everybody's birthday in the Eastern Panhandle. That's well, that's remarkable. I don't know everybody's <laughs> There's a lot of, uh, yeah, I try. How about that? <laughs> I, I don't know everybody's. It's, it's amazing. But uh, things are really popping for us at the mission right now. Um, we're like 65, 66,000 meals we've served already this year. That's incredible. Yeah, our numbers have just skyrocketed. Um, Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Okay, and see, I know when I say it, sometimes it, people think it's a bad thing. For me, I look at it as a bad thing. We, we, we see more and more people coming in with the need uh, and housing need and the drug uh, the drug issue is so bad, um, it, it is, is overwhelming. Um, and that causes poverty anytime where there's drug abuse, alcohol abuse, the poverty level is just skyrockets. Um, I, I know there's a lot of people out there that would disagree with me, but I work day to day doing this. Um, you guys know that I'm on the ground. I don't sit in an office all day. Um, we, I, 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 and the stories I could tell you, uh, would just break your heart. Um, we, we get people sent to us nonstop, uh, abused, um, our, our, our housing shelter. We, um, got a lot of people in there now. Uh, we're full and at the uh, uh, to Haven House, the family transitional housing, uh, the women's shelter, the men's were up, I think, 73, 74 men. Now, the people being sent to you are the relatives of those who are have, have the drug issues and are seeking shelter. Or are these the people with the drug issues that are coming to you? It, it's both. OK. Yeah. yeah. And and it's a breakdown of the family. It, it all goes back to the breakdown of the family. The drugs and the alcohol abuse are the, um, what do you call it, the surface mm -hmm. stuff of the Symptoms. Uh, symptoms, thank you. Symptoms of the core that there really is. And it really goes to the, I mean, a lot of people will, experts out there, I have a lot of friends. I, I mean, I've been doing, I've been working with uh, rescue missions and homelessness and drug and alcohol since 1986. So you can add those years up. It's quite a bit of years I've been doing this. Um, it, it's it's gotten worse i have seen and, and in martinsburg i hate i hate to say it and i don't want to be doom and gloom but it, it, it's it's really bad right now uh the, dr the drug stuff coming in is unbelievable um where's it coming in from well i mean you just had the big drug bust of the cartels from out of mexico mm -hmm. and i'm from california okay and when i see fresno 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 which you saw in those guys names okay Fresno, California, Fres I dealt with that, okay? I came out of the Central Valley. If you know, anybody's from California knows the Central Valley, uh, that, that, that cartel comes out of the Central Valley. The, the uh, Serenios, the Norteas, MS-13. Um, I dealt with those guys face-to-face. -face. Um, in my home, they showed up. Uh, in my church, they showed up. And at the rescue mission I was at, they showed up. Uh, and, including the Hell's Angels, which everybody glorifies Hell's Angels. Um, Hell's Angels, um, a lot of people don't realize what they do. Um, in my opinion, um, they, I, I have no respect for what they do. Um, the drug dealing and the human trafficking and the guns and everything else. But when you have a cartel right here in Martinsburg, sitting right here, and you only busted 25, Okay, I, I, the police are doing all that they can. Their hands are tied in a lot of ways. But 25 tells me that there's a lot more here. Once they come, they come. And for some reason, this area is a very financial, lucrative area for drugs. Um, they wouldn't be here if the, if the demand wasn't here. Okay, they only go where they're making money. They don't go where they're not making money. Um, I've been dealing with gangs and that kind of stuff for decades, I mean decades, uh, not from a police background, but from a pastor's background where I can get into places, I've done weddings, I've done funerals for them, um, quinceaneras, I've done all that stuff. If you're from California, you know what I'm talking about. They always come to the religious side, but then <laughs> they also hate me because I call them out for what they're doing. 
Um, so there's a lot that goes on. And when you see that and they're here now, I mean, there's a big um, uh, part of Washington, D.C. that people don't talk about that's heavy MS-13. I mean, heavy, heavy MS-13. They don't talk about it. Um, those, are th those are dangerous things. I mean, it's like having terrorists in your own backyard. Uh, if you're from the Central Valley, you know in certain areas like Ceres, uh, you go down to Fresno, you go down to Merced, um, Turlock, where I lived for over 15 years, um, Modesto, which is, used to be the meth capital of the world, Modesto. Um, I, I mean, it's things, I mean, um, I have people who go through law enforcement training and they study about Modesto. Um, I, I ministered there for 15 years. I can tell you things that, that would... If you grow hair on your back on your head, I mean, it, it's. Hey. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wow. Hey, <laughs> I would like to hear. They're, that they're in. They want That's the story. story. Yeah. No, uh, I, I'm just trying to spice it up, but I don't want to be doom and gloom. But what I'm trying to let people understand is, I mean, we need to support our law enforcement and what's going on out there. They're they're handcuffed in what they can do and how many they can get. Are at you once. suggesting that there's a burgeoning and visible gang uh, growth that you're aware of here in Martinsburg? Well, I. I well, I mean, I, I don't have to. The, the police have already proved that. When you have the, I forget, I can't pronounce the word right, Salida cartel from Mexico. Oh, Sidalgo. So, yeah, operating out of a uh, garage here, a, a mechanical garage out of here in Martinsburg. It's right there in the paper. I mean, they had it uh, point after point after point. They even had the names of people. Look, and when you see Fresno, you see anything out of the Central Valley, out of California, that's heavy gang, that's heavy cartel. Look it up, study. You you can find it with all the contacts you have. Mm -hmm. you, I don't need to. You could probably make one or two phone calls, and they'll verify what I'm telling you. Anything out of the Central Valley in California, heavy gang, heavy cartel, because that that whole area is agriculture. So it's easy to hide things. It's easy to do things in that area. Um, it, it's they cook meth in all kinds of places out there. I mean, so now you have that here, the tentacles of that here. And if you think all you got, they got them and they got them all, uh, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> they, got, they got those who they could get that the law allowed them to get. Um, and again, I'm not, uh, I'm not speaking out against law enforcement. Their hands are tied in what they can do and how far they can go. But I've been on the inside. I've met families. Um, I've had them in my home, in my home. By choice. <laughs> Not always by choice, okay? <laughs> when they show up at 10 o'clock at night and they knock on your door uh, and they want to talk to you because they're frustrated because they, a lot of, lot of things. They, they show up at times when you don't expect them, okay? But then I've, I've been in a lot of their homes where I've done their funerals. I've done their weddings. I've done all kinds of stuff. Um, and, and the, for example, a 16-year-old girl, one of the family members, Big time gang member in the Central Valley, she took her own life. She went, blew her head off with a shotgun. Okay, they came to me, wanted me to do the funeral. I went and did the funeral. They had police around this funeral. They had gangs from all over the area come. It was packed with gangs, all the different colors. Um, but at that point in time, they were all, um, what's the word, nice to each other, peaceful, peaceful. Yeah, truce. And we had to do all that stuff, and then. Afterwards, you know, everybody went, but um, um, so I was kind of like that guy that they did that stuff with. Um, it seems like anywhere I go, I kind of I'm that neutral guy that they can come to and 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 get that kind of um, service and help. But I don't hold back. I preach the gospel to them. I preach, uh, you know, that what their the lifestyle they're living, that the, the decisions are made. I mean, I didn't. When I preached that funeral to that to, to that situation, I didn't talk about the young girl. I talked about those there, doing the drugs, um, because she was suicidal from all the drugs she was taking, and she was on drugs when she took a shotgun and blew her head off. And it's like, okay, guys, when are you gonna, you know, these, you're now you're killing your own kin, and and you're sacrificing your own kin to this evil, and you're you know, it, it's just it, it, it's 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 a terrible thing. And I'm not saying Martinsburg has all that, like California. But what I'm saying is, is we need to equip the police. We need to encourage the police. We need to, whatever we can. I mean, we just had a shooting in Martinsburg yesterday. I, think there, were, I think there were two or three of them yesterday. Yeah, yeah. well, um, I just read the thing from the chief of police. Two were killed. Um, 
what it what what, what that was about i don't know i'm not going to speculate but but i mean it, it it's when you put in when you ha when you start mixing that kind of the cartels and and the and the drugs and everything it's a look i don't know why martinsburg's lucrative because i look around and i see poverty everywhere i don't know why martinsburg this this lucrative area in, in a sense of drugs because i from my perspective and you gotta remember my perspective and you've been down there you've seen oh i've been i'm surrounded by folks that are that are, that maybe they make an average of Less than twenty thousand a year, maybe fifteen thousand a year. So I see it from a different perspective. Those are my glasses, okay. Um, other people see from other perspectives. Well, but people who are on drugs will do whatever it yes. takes to get their drugs, whatever nefarious acts. Um, I, I've been here since '96. Uh, before that, I guess it was late '80s. Martinsburg was on the cover of Time, the cover of Newsweek. The Jamaican Posse's were here. Yeah. And it was, was one little of the little Baltimore days. It was one of the it was one of the largest. I don't know if you've read the articles, but it was one of the largest drug busts in America. And you know where that and took place? Right where right where the rescue mission right is. Right where the rescue mission is. I <laughs> right, mean, they, they were up on the hill. Literally. They were around the rescue mission. They were yeah. everywhere. I mean, it's literally. if you if you look it up, if any if any of our readers just Google Martinsburg drug bust late eighties, and it'll bring up the Newsweek article. We were on the cover oh. of Newsweek. Many of our viewers right now on TV ten and listeners yeah. on radio were here during that time. They and, lived it. And and I'll be honest with you, John. I, I thank you for your question. I still when I say I. I represent the rescue mission, just my position. Um, but everywhere I go, I still, uh, the rescue mission suffers that. People still associate us with that. They think the rescue mission is full of drugs. They think that's what we do there. Well, John will tell you, uh, Rob will tell you, I, I, there's a lot that I, since I've been there, I cleaned up. In fact, uh, Chief Maury, Chief George, now Chief Gibbons, um, we police our own block. We police everything. We do um, urinalysis tests uh, once a month. I mean, we, we do everything. Um, so we cleaned up our block, but the problem is we can only control our block. Beyond that, I can't control that. Um, and um, it, 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 and it, I look at it from a Christian point of view perspective. Um, people are going back to the void right here. Up here is the, sub, uh, is the symptoms, as Rob said. I look at the core, and the core is um, uh, people have lost their purpose. Um, they don't know who they are anymore. Um, family breakdown is, is just uh, atrocious. I mean, uh, for example, uh, I have, uh, I gotta be careful how I say this. I have family in one of our shelters, and I have family in another one of our shelters. Two generations. Mm. Wow. Okay, and I can't go in beyond that. And that's just one example. I got five of them. And when people try to preach to me and tell me, oh, no, Pastor Tim, they just need a place to live. No, no. They need more than a place to live. They need a restructure here of who they are. They were created in the image of Do God. Do they know that? The people that we minister to, yeah. yeah, that's what we teach them. Okay. We teach them they're not. Is that why they come to you? Because they realize they need that? Well, they must because we never short of people. <laughs> We're short of resources. I, I, I have 13 staff to minister to uh, hundreds, thousands of people monthly. I, and, and most of my staff have come up through our programs. So, I, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a challenge. I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking. Uh, then we rejoice, like um, uh, Derek, who just graduated from the Beauty Academy down the street. Um, Melissa, uh, not Melissa, oh, geez. Well, let's just call her Melissa, is, is going to the Beauty Academy. We're paying for that as part of our educational, Doug Winmeyer Educational Foundation mm -hmm. that was founded, that we got established. Um, we're helping them, her go to school to be, get her degree in nail technician. Because of a lot of our people, they're, and they're not going to go off to Shepherd or WVU, not because those colleges aren't bad or anything, but our folks are older. They need to get jobs. They need to pay for their kids. They need to support. So they're going to go to technical schools like Blue Ridge, um, the Beauty Cat, because they're going to go to work right away. They want to go school four months, six months, get their certification, and get out there and work because they have to take care of their families and stuff like that. So 
uh, we've been blessed with all that. So we have a lot of good stories and exciting stories. Uh, the whole teeth situation, we're able to help people get um, teeth now and get their abscess taken care of through the um, Give a Smile Foundation, Dr. Lisa uh, and Buzz Poland, who blessed us with that. And then um, Good Samaritan Free Health Clinic blessed us with some funds to get uh, people their teeth and stuff. So there's a lot of things. Uh, uh, Jonathan comes in and helps us with uh, Medicare and Medicaid and all that other stuff because a lot of our folks are on that. It, it is such a challenge. Um, we had a, a lady, a, a guy come in the other day with, with, a, ten, with a 10 year old girl. They're living out in, in a tent. Um, he's working for a bunch of, uh, un, un, he's working under the table. He won't give up his job working under the table because if he if he get it because we we don't do under the table jobs with our people because that's not really helping somebody okay that's enslaving them in many ways under the table being cash right 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 because if they get injured or hurt that the, the employer goes well i don't know you right you're out of here and it doesn't uh, contribute to their social security later in life anyway thank you so a situation they've sent to us and he's come to us twice now trying to convince us um that what he's doing is fine he's using he's He's working under the table. He won't give it up. And then this is what he says to me. He says, well, Pastor, if I, if I get a legitimate job, I have to pay back all my child support. <laughs> really? As a man, that's what you should be doing. Yeah. Are you kidding me? You see? But yet the world, the world tells him, keep working under the table. Right. Well, and, and you, you touched on something there, Tim, that has been one of my issues for a long time. And that as men, thank you, we have failed our families. Yeah. We have too many men who are not a part of their children's lives. Yeah. We have too many men who are making too many children with too many different women, and then they don't see their kids. They might not even know where they are, and many of them are not paying for their children's support, for helping that child grow. But you know what? Kid needs food kid needs you need money to buy clothes and whatever but a kid needs his dad in his life too amen there's a lot of screwed up men who has a root cause because their father wasn't a part of their lives and universally we have made that the norm for too many years now we even have a system in place that allows it sure and encourages it, it, it encourages it, it. Encourage it. And when i started our discipleship group uh two three i don't even know how many years ago now nine, i started with 19 men uh, I, I, I said, how many men in here grew up with a father? One man raised his hand. These are grown men now. These are grown men I'm talking about. Grown men. One man raised his hand. I said, so one man in here grew up with a father out of 19. Many of them didn't even know who their father was. Then I said to the one who raised his hand, I said, well, tell me about your dad. Well, he was an alcoholic and he was abusive. Yeah. 19 men, that was the image of a man. Mm-hmm. Now, Rob, what you just said, aren't there large radio markets in this country where what you just said would get you canceled? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't work in every... I, I know. Work here. I know. I but, but what I'm saying right. is... But, yeah. that's, but that's the whole... That's the problem. What, oh, you, what, I, I, what you were saying is that I'll get, what people I, I, were saying... I'll get hate mail all day for what I'm saying right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll, get, oh. I'll get people telling me, I ain't supporting the mission anymore. You're, you're a male chauvinist. You're this. You're that. Really, why don't you come to the mission and see how many people we help and how many are they are women and children that nobody else is helping and, and, and we're housing them and taking care of them and providing jobs for them. Why don't you come and see how male chauvinist see, I am? And this has been a problem for, you know, I, I was a firefighter for a number of years. People who vilify emergency responders who have never been an emergency responder, people who vilify what you do and have never done what you do. It is so easy to sit in an ivory castle where it, everything is clean and then pass judgment on those who are actually doing the stuff in, in, in the gutters. And it does frost my flakes. It, it's, a, it, it's a problem. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable the amount of fathers that are not around now. Oh. I mean, in some communities, it's, I mean, what, what, 20% of kids have a father in the home. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, I, I'm a, I was a single father. I raised three kids on my own. And there's nothing greater, there's no greater joy I've had in my life than raising my kids, correcting my kids, pushing my kids to be the best people they can be, and watching them succeed. Well, that picture of you and your daughter standing there, 
and with her graduation. Oh man, on. the pride. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, you see it in you. You see it in her. I mean, she's standing next to you like that. And I, I mean, to me, I, I raised four daughters. My wife said, God gave me four daughters to calm me down. <laughs> 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 but uh it, it it is i mean i'm not perfect uh i'm i mean my kids could probably tell you all the problems i got but i wouldn't trade it for the world raising my kids well and it's it's i mean for fathers it's not about being perfect it's about being there yeah it's about making mistakes and then getting up the next morning and saying damn it i was not as good as i could have been yesterday but I'm going to be better today. I'm going to do better today. I mean, it breaks my heart. We One family came to us, uh, a mom and four kids. She came to us, and I'm not going to get into everything so people would know who she is. Came to us, her father beat her, her brother beat her, then her husband beat her. So her image of men were what? Abuse. Abuse. But yet, a man could just smile at her, tell her, you look good, and she's boop jumping right on that wagon and running down the road. Now, I've been spending time counseling and, 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 and pouring into her saying, you're, you're made in the image of God. You're, you're more valuable than gold. Stop chasing after these guys that blow you a kiss and tell you you look good. You know, raise your standards. Say, do you got a job? What's your background? What do you believe in? Do you love God? Do you, you know, do you love God or do you love me more than you love yourself? What are you willing to give up? Because all the men in her life have done nothing but selfish abuse and abuse. She don't know anything else. Her kids are going to know that. So we're raising another generation, as you said, with the minus of that. Sorry now, about that. Now, you're good. I have three minutes left. I okay. want to make sure you had a chance to address the primary reason why you came today before you go. Just, uh, we, we had a rough summer we, we, um, in the sense of finances. We got hit hard. Um, our numbers are sky high. Uh, we really need donations to step up. If anybody go online, make a five, ten, fifteen, twenty dollar donation. Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission. We're going into the fall. We don't want to go into the negative into the fall and then come uh, October, November, December. I gotta get out there and dance like on the corner or whatever. <laughs> I didn't, you don't want me to. Well, yeah, no, we don't want you dancing. Um, you don't have the legs for it, my friend. No, I don't. Um, let me say this. Yeah. Um, Bodwell Insurance Solutions will drop off a check for 250 for you uh, tomorrow that. when we're in town. I call on other small business owners who are doing well in this community. Um, the rescue mission and, and what Tim does and the help of the people and his program in there where it's empowering people. They're not giving anything away. Everybody in the rescue mission works. Yeah. Everybody is brought back into society. They are taught that they are valued, that they are an important person, that they they have a position. They have, I mean, they, they, they give them dignity back. Yes. I mean, it's your, your program is beautiful. Yeah. And, and, uh, and if you. anybody else out there is listening, you know, please help this program. It helps people locally and it helps people get back. It helps people who are down, downtrodden, get back into society. It helps them get back into where, where even if you're just looking at it from a fiscal perspective, it helps them get back into a position where they are earning their money, yeah. where they are paying taxes, where they are then feeding their children, which, which helps in the next generation. But yeah, we, I, I want to thank you for everything you do in our community. You are, you're an amazing human being and I'm, I'm very thankful to know you, my friend. Well, I appreciate that. I don't know about all that, but thank you for what you said. And thank you guys for your support and Rob giving me this opportunity Absolutely. to want and share. Always an open mic for you, sir. That, I, I appreciate it. And you guys know I'm there for you anytime, any place. Um, Nobody tells better stories. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I wish I didn't have those stories, brother. <laughs> thank do you, you. Do you need any specific items dropped off at the mission? 30 uh, seconds. We need lots of laundry detergent and toilet paper. We have a lot of butts to wipe. <laughs> how about and that, that how about that one <laughs> thank you tim thank you thank you